a woman who cannot or does not want, for whatever the reason, to be pregnant will do anything, anything, to stop the pregnancy. And that's history. My dad was a general practitioner and the best. But I decided I wanted to do obstetrics, deliver babies, and gynecology. And I not only got it, but I was, quote, successful at it. I got out of medical school in 44. I was very lucky, and I received the residency in New York City that I felt would meet my needs, and that was three years at Harlem Hospital in Upper Manhattan. Everything that came through the doors was mine to take care of. And the numbers of incomplete, infected, bleeding, post-abortal pregnancies, it was awful. Who is doing the abortion? It's somebody probably untrained and may not even care what happens to the patient. And it's a back room, kitchen table type of thing. Now the patient may leave that not knowing that she's been damaged. She's paid her fee, which might be exorbitant, but she doesn't know that she's in trouble until she gets home and a day later or that same day, she begins to get terrible cramps. She's bleeding and then somebody has to get her to go to a hospital. And some of them were afraid to go to a hospital because, oh, we would report them because abortion was illegal. And they were doing an illegal thing. I never once asked a patient, why did you do this? Well, this was not our business. This was their business. Despite the many that I treated, this particular case stood out. I had a very lovely woman of color, a nurse, came in because she had been aborted somewhere on Long Island. And uh, she didn't feel well. And we looked at, somebody said, oh, that's her umbilical cord hanging down. Well, when I went over to her, that umbilical cord was not that. It was her bowel. It was hanging to the floor. We removed her uterus, her tubes, her ovaries. She was never going to have children of her own. And there was feces all over her pelvis, of course. And, and we just washed and washed and washed. And I must tell you that six months later, I went to her wedding. She invited me to her wedding, and I was very happy to go. I never had done abortions, but I really learned how to clean them up after they'd been badly managed. And that cemented in my mind that why should that be? Why not have it that they can have it done better? My clinic on Beacon Street, we used to have on Saturdays like five or 600 protesters. I never dared park my car there, but they would find me and follow me along the street. I never felt morally that I was doing the wrong thing. I don't think that life, it, as we determine life, happens at conception. The possibility of life and looking forward to life, yes. My position was that I was taking care of a woman, a grown woman, and that to me took the place of stopping a pregnancy 
before it becomes that type of life. What do you mean, can I imagine it would happen if Roe v. Wade went away? Women would still have abortion. They'd not be able to have them in good hospitals by good doctors who were trained to do it if there was a law against it. Men are deciding these things. Women are not involved in the decision. They have committee meetings in dark rooms with eight men in ties. And they're deciding what a woman should be able to do with her own body.